Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome to my channel. Today we have yet again Marco on the channel. Marco has been a big influence in the Hashlips lab ecosystem, so I'm very fortunate to have him on here with me. We're going to be discussing the ERC 721R contract, which no one really has talked about. So we're going to be discussing that to see if it's good or bad. But before we get to that, how's it going, Marco? Hi, Daniel. Uh, awesome, awesome. Thank you. And thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure. Yeah, always good to have you here. I think we'll have more of these sessions. But now, to get to the true question, what is ERC 721R? Now, before we get into that, ERC 721 is the standard of the NFT token, the non-fungible token. And that's been adapted as we have gone, you know, through our development journey going to the 721A, which is an optimized um, contract, working with counters instead of enumerables. And now there's this ERC 721R contract, which is refundability. The uh, R contract basically gives the owner the ability to refund uh, all the people purchasing the NFTs. Now, whether this is good or bad, we'll find out. Marco, what's your take on this new contract and what is the shortfalls, do you think, by implementing something like this? Yeah, uh, so first of all, I'm not going to take these uh, from the developer perspective just for a second because uh, we're not uh, saying if this is good or bad um, in the way it's coded, basically. Uh, we're just thinking about the NFT space, how we know it, and uh, uh, what NFT collections are actually used for now. And uh, uh, every time that we consider a new implementation of the specification, so some extra features, basically, uh, we have absolutely have to take into consideration uh, the purpose and uh, uh, if it's good or bad for the community itself. So in my opinion, my personal opinion, um, uh, a proper business that wants to run something successful with a, and fund that with a collection, an NFT collection, um, might find it kind of hard to um, start up the, the project if they cannot rely on the funds that they are getting. Um, I'm not saying that um, you can't run, uh, start, make a startup of a project with just a half of the funds, but in many situations, uh, you really need the... Um, yeah, a kind of a, a warranty that the funds will be there in order to maybe take good deals with the service providers, or maybe you have to create some uh, real life, in real life uh, products and you have to uh, set up a production facility or stuff like that. And uh, things, if you have a, a small capital at your disposal, uh, that can be quite cost, uh, yeah, quite pricey at that point. I don't know if you agree with that. I do agree. I think when you when you start an NFT project, you know, for the main part of it, it's you want to bring out something that you can give to the community. And obviously, every NFT is different. You might have a company that serves some kind of utility, and that utility might cost fund. For example, uh, if you uh, making a game, right, and you're selling an NFT as a game object or something you'll most probably need to pay a game house to construct this game for you. If in the case where you started this game project and you have made the contract refundable and 80% of the people have, re have taken the refund, 20% of the people really believe in that project, but the 80% of that chunk of funds are gone, meaning that it would quite be po impossible, in my opinion, to complete that project. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from an investor point of view, uh, I'm not saying that this must be seen as a red flag, but I would personally um, see that kind of like a red flag because, uh, you know, um, if I invest on a project, I want to make sure that uh, everyone doing the same uh, will be able to uh, run the project along with, the, with me. And um, let's say we have a refund uh, period of 30 days. Uh, it would take at least 30 days to make sure that the collection, the, the project, will be uh, able to, to run properly. And that's a lot of time. 
And in my opinion, that that's also something that simply delays the uh, the sellout of the collection. It's not actually fixing the problem. It's uh, kind of like a patch to that. And uh, if we think about the real way why they uh, started these uh, uh, new projects, this new implementation, um, they wanted to um, get rid of some rug pulls that were happening uh, in the latest weeks. Uh, but yeah, I kind of see that like um, rag pullers, <laughs> professional rag pullers, will simply have to wait 30 days more to do the same stuff. Or maybe they're just going to get uh, 50% of the funds or 30%, but that doesn't matter. It's, um, it's still a rag pull, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't protect against that. You see, we're not talking about this from a developer standpoint. Development-wise, I think it's beautiful. I think it's pretty cool that you can give back some funds after someone has minted the token. And how it works is the owner of that token then says, I want a refund. I'll send it back to the contract. The contract sends it maybe to the owner. But needless to say, the person gets a refund. And the owner can decide if it's a full refund or a partial refund. And I think in, in some instances that might be valuable. Maybe there's an event that everyone had to go to, pay a bit up front and get 80% back after the event is done. That is a good use case, but not in an NFT project where you want to promote growth going forward because you're going to leave some people uh, behind. And I think to that point, Marco, um, it's kind of safe to say our opinions, you know, are not so sold on the refund thing um, quite yet. We will most probably show people how to implement this in the future, but is it a good thing? In my opinion, I don't think so. I think it adds that extra dynamic that the project owners now need to control, worry about, and as a stable investment, as an investor into a utility token, I surely see that as a warning sign because most people can just take the refund and you're left by yourself um, on the last day. And um, just based on that, I'm not saying all projects doing this is, is that that's the case. That's just my opinion. That's your opinion. We all can have opinions, so don't follow our advice, but <clears throat> this is the channel where we discuss it. But at the end of the day, Marco, it comes down to people doing due diligence and look at projects that they are going to invest in. If the project seems solid and you know the kind of developers or community behind the project, that's a good thing to know. And if they have a refund option, it's all maybe up to the dynamic of how they want to run their project. Any other words you have on that? Uh, subject. Oh, um, yeah, I 100% agree with, with what you said. And um, uh, to be honest, uh, I think that any feature can find its use cases. Uh, as you said, we're not saying this is bad um, Yeah, for every project. Uh, we might see new projects coming up that uh, maybe do things in a different way. Also, uh, maybe are pure artists that want to sell their um, art pieces like final products because that's the real difference. If you're if you're selling a final product, you're already invested in it, and uh, it's totally fine if you want to give people opportun the opportunity to get their funds back because there is no um, no long time roadmap or at least it's a bit different. Uh, so yeah, that's just our opinion on that, and I really hope that we will see some good use cases for this kind of uh, a feature. Absolutely, man. I'm out of breath because in this little pause, I ran to go and get my groceries. So we're going to put it into this video right now. Marco, thank you so much for being on here. It was a pleasure, man. Me too. Thank you very much.